In this video, we're going to take a look at redox titration. So what is a redox titration? Well, really, it's just like a titration. It's just using a redox reaction instead of, say, for example, an acid-base reaction or neutralization reaction. So in this case, you will have a known concentration of an oxidizing agent and it can be used to find the unknown concentration of a reducing agent, or you can have vice versa. So for example, you could have something like a solution of KiO3 in your burette here. And then um, a really good application is looking at a food sample containing ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, uh, with some other additions. And then what you're doing as you're titrating is looking for that color change happening in here. And once you have that color change happening, you know you've reached your endpoint of your titration. So that's one great application. Another one is the iron content of water. Or uh, another great one is also called the Winkler method, which looks at the amount of dissolved oxygen in a water sample, and we're going to talk about that one in particular in another video. Now, if you're given a redox titration problem, it is stoichiometry. So really, you're going to follow all the same steps as you would for any stoichiometry problem, where you want to first balance the redox reaction, and you'll be using the half reactions method here. And that was in another video. If you need to go back and take a look, make sure you do. The second step, find the moles of the given substance. So this is the same as in any other stoichiometry problem. We're then going to use mole ratios to find the moles of the required substance. And finally, we're going to convert back those moles to the required units in the problem. Let's take a look at an example then. So the following example involves the titration of a solution of sodium oxalate and a solution of potassium permanganate. We want to find the volume of 0.2 molar solution of MnO4 minus, which will react with 50 centimeters cubed of 0.1 molar solution of oxalate ions. Now, in terms of our stoichiometry, the first step here is we need to balance our redox reaction. So pause the video here, balance the reaction, and then when you're ready to check your answer, press play again. Okay, welcome back. So you should have the following two half reactions here, one containing the MnO4 plus, or sorry, MnO4 minus, and the other one containing the oxalate ion. And your final balanced equation should be here. So make sure you take a minute and check your answer before moving on. Our next step in our solving this problem is finding the moles of the known solution. So we, what we know from this problem is we know the volume and we know the concentration of the oxalate ion. So we're going to, for the oxalate ion, find the number of moles using the concentration and the volume. So plugging in here, we have 50.0 centimeters cubed, which is 50 milliliters, or in liters, that's 0 0.0500. And then our concentration is 0 0.100. That's going to give us 0 0.005 moles. Next, we need to use a mole ratio. So this is using our balanced chemical equation. We know that for every two moles of MnO4 minus, we are reacting with five moles of oxalate ions. Okay, and then that is, we're trying to find X. And then on the bottom, we have 0 0.005 moles. Okay, solving for this, that gives us 0 0.002 moles of MnO4 minus. And then final step, we need to solve for the volume, and we have a concentration. So solving for volume, we're going to take the moles over the concentration, so 0 0.002 over 
0.200. And then two significant digits, we're going to do 0 0.0100 liters. Or if you want to put that in milliliters, it looks a little bit nicer. It's 10.0 milliliters. And that would be our final answer. So doesn't take too many steps, very, very similar to a typical stoichiometry problem. The big sort of thing here that you need to pay attention to is balancing the redox reaction. Once you have that, the rest of the steps are pretty easy. That's it for this video then. Let's move on to our next task.